Hello, Vida Fama. Hey. How is everybody doing? We love you guys so, so much. Um, right. I'm going to go through a few names. I know Jeremy's got some too. They're getting longer and longer. Wow. We're crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Eric Hernandez from North Carolina, Fernando Tarin in Oklahoma, um, Edwin Villanueva in Atlantic City Justice Facility. Wow, okay, I think that's okay. the first we've heard of that. So wow, anybody and everybody awesome. listening in Atlantic County, County, I, I said city, um, Atlantic County Justice Facility. Hello to you guys and spread the word, people. Right, come on. If there's only a few that know, um, do spread the word, show them the music. Let's fish, all right? right come on. Um, Fernando Flores in Mayo, Florida. Elisandro Torres here in Texas. Um, Glenn Sell in Grand Junction, Colorado. Awesome. Uh, Roth from Ramsey. Um, oh, he's the one that made La Chunk La Tambourine. Oh, it, that's awesome. It looks like a tambourine, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Yeah, it looks like a tambourine, and he made me some little chanclas, and Both it's got sides, real yeah. vida on one side and, <laughs> and the Dallas Cowboy thing on the other side. <laughs> I thought the chanclas couldn't get any tinier, and then <laughs> they, they did. Yeah. Right, and he gave me like two little chanclas yeah. that aren't glued on there. They are so small and so cute. <laughs> anyway, Kentucky State Penitentiary, Eddieville in Eddieville, Kentucky. Everybody listening there, Darian Ford and Wayne Wright. Edwin Crabtree and Michael's unit, Nicholas Smith and Hughes unit. Um, let's see. Um, the, and you know what? What? Somebody said to me that um, my little Mijo card that we made the shirt out of, there's my little Mijo. He's so cute. Um, that I said five, the G5s did it. I don't think I did, but I got to go back and watch it. Um, I probably mentioned that the G5s also made me something that we turned into a shirt right um yeah. and i think i think that's what you were wearing that day the yes, other day it was. the other yeah. day so mm -hmm. anyway but those are from the all red seggers right and um we love you guys and then you got a card yes from them right for a birthday yes. card and <laughs> and you know you see the card on the outside and there's the little cupcake and all of that but when you open it and you see all those signatures wow. yeah. oh man it's so sweet it's so yeah. real it's I mean, I love that. Thank so you guys. I was putting it up on the wall and then I took it down so that he could mm -hmm. take a look and read those. Oh, man. So anyway, thank you guys so much for that. Let's see. Where am I at? On the trending, it's working a little weird. Mm. So, uh, I've got a letter kind of mentioning that um, about it. They're trying something new, they said. Um, and so anyway, but it doesn't matter. Right. We, but if you're not subscribed on Pando, go ahead and subscribe. Right. Because the girl that wrote to me, she's like, it's taking a bunch of swipes. I don't know what that means to get on there. She said it used to only take me five or six swipes and now yeah. it's taking me 15 to 20 swipes or whatever, something like that. And um, she said the more people get on, the, right. the harder it is. But I right. think if you, if you subscribe... It shouldn't do that. No, if you subscribe, it's going to show you right away when you pop, when right? pop up. Yeah. And if you have the Securest tablet, we are also on that app too that you can find us on video um, over there. And so um, there's that. And honey, what do you have? Well, obviously we got to okay. shout out some map pins. There's the Vita Nation map. And so uh, people like these visual clues. So here's two clues today. There's one of our new pins. Okay. And there's another one of our new pins. And our new pins this week are Woodstock, Illinois hey, uh, okay. and Cedar City, Utah. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to talk about our upcoming trips. I have been spending hours every yes. day, hours, yes. working on the trips, coordinating with chaps. I talked to four or five chaps today, I think, and emailed more. Uh, so there's the Missouri uh, State House in Jefferson City, Missouri, uh, where hopefully we'll be going. Here is a clue about one of the new units that's popped onto our itinerary. That's Christ of the Ozarks. Uh, it's actually in Branson, uh, I believe leave or it's maybe Eureka Springs in Arkansas. Here's our agenda. You'll see that one is missing because unfortunately because of staffing issues, we're not going to be able to go to Potosi. We hate that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll catch you guys next time. But we were able to get Ozark Correctional in Fordland, Missouri uh, added last minute to our schedule. So I really appreciate their chaplain and administration. And we're almost there. Yeah, right. it's coming yeah. in a few days. By the time this podcast gets put out, we're going to be Almost boarding the plane yeah, at yeah, least. Let's get on the yeah, plane. to Missouri. All right. So here's our Arizona trip. Um, and right now we already have these units. This okay. is crazy because this is happening very fast. La Paz, Cebola, Cocopa, 
Cheyenne, Florence, Geo. Now, those first four are in Yuma, Arizona. Okay. Uh, Florence, Geo is kind of outside of Phoenix. I have a question mark because we're still trying to confirm some dates. All right. And so there's Bevo in a field of blue bonnets. You can't get any more Texas than Bevo in blue right. bonnets. Here's our upcoming Texas units right there. I have some shout outs and Mama Eve has instructed me to do them quickly because we have a lot on our program yes. today. So I'm going to try and do it without tripping. I want to shout out Matthew Lindsay at Clemens Unit, Eric Hell in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, Big Huncho in Arlington County, Virginia Jail. And he wanted to shout out 7A, 7B, and 9B, but I just want to shout out everybody there. That yes. That's right. Uh, Stephen Hedrick in El Paso, Texas, Hugo Gonzalez uh, in Calexico, California. That's awesome. Jeffrey Connor in Seminole, Florida, William Reynolds in Marion Correctional, Ohio, Dre Montoya in Buena Vista, Colorado, Jimmy Manning at Hamilton CI in Jasper, Florida, and an all red unit. We want to shout out Dragu, Ike Beach. Charlie Brown and all the G5s that are graduating uh, this Saturday, oh, I think, cool. August 30th. It is the three-year anniversary of their program for That's G5s. Awesome, it is possible. It's their program. Uh, and they've graduated over 200 G5s in the last three years. I, I hope that yeah. some of the other units that don't have the G5 program will start on that. Um, G5s and, and fours need more programs for sure if we're going to see change. And, um, and you do see change in these classes that, you know, Dragu and, and um, Crew are leading and um, we, we need it and they want it. There are yes, many right. guys that do want more. They want to change and they need the means by which to do it. I will tell you, we haven't firmed up the unit yet, but one of the units in Arizona, they already knew your reputation precedes you, honey. They know that you want to go to the hardest ones to reach, the Come ones on. that nobody else wants to go to. So we're going to see some fours and fives in Arizona. Come on. That's so uh, awesome. When we go in October. That's so exciting. I'm excited about that. That's so amazing. I'm going to shout out the surge team at Denver Correctional, uh, Amelico Atufo in King County Correctional, Kent, Washington, David Stanley in Marion, North Carolina. So we've had Marion, Ohio and Marion, North Carolina today. Hunter Moses at Beto, Cortland Rogers at Johnston CI in Smithfield, North Carolina. And he said all 700 in uh, Johnston CI in Smithfield, North Carolina are riding with Real Vita. Yay. So I want to shout out. Hello, you guys. We love you. Yeah. Um, Mike Miller in Missouri. I didn't get that one out. And I'm going to read like, you know, at the beginning of your Bible, um, you know, chapter book or what have you, sometimes you'll have... um, a summary or, you know, what it's about in, in, in there. And um, this is the Message Bible and it's talking about Amos and Amos and it, it is gonna go with our topic somewhat today and I want to share what it says, okay? So it says, more people are exploited and abused in the cause of religion than in any other way. Sex, money, and power all take a back seat to religion as a source of evil. Religion is the most dangerous energy source known to humankind. The moment a person or government or religion or organization is convinced that God is either ordering or sanctioning a cause or project, anything goes. The history worldwide of religion-fueled hate, killing, and oppression is staggering. The biblical prophets are in the front line of those doing something about it. Mm. So it's going to talk about biblical prophets and what their personality was like and how they thought and what they did. And the truth is that this fits any real Christian today too. So it says the biblical prophets continue to be the most powerful and effective voices ever heard on this earth for keeping religion honest, humble, and compassionate. Prophets sniff out injustice, especially injustice that is dressed up in religious garb. They sniff out a mile away. Prophets see through hypocrisy, especially hypocrisy that assumes a religious pose. Prophets are not impressed by position or power or authority. Like people that are real Christians, um, you are not moved by someone's position or power or authority. If they're saying the wrong thing, they're still wrong, no matter how much money they have, no matter what title they carry, no, no matter what position they hold. They aren't taken in by numbers, a size, or appearance of success. Because, you know, there's appearance of success. Right. 
Right. And truly that appearance, it's an appearance. You know, if, if we are asking for success right now today of a church, you're like, how many, how many members do they have? Right. right. And um, like, they've got 30 church members. You're like, oh, you know, you don't feel like that's successful. Oh, they've got 16,000 um, members or they've got 30,000 members. Oh, they're successful. Right. But the truth is that's not how success is measured. Right. Jesus had 12 yeah, and then on, one of them on. betrayed him. Why? So on. he had eleven. <laughs> right. Um, so so it's not it's not the numbers or appearance of success. So be careful because you're watching people and you think they're successful because they got all these people around them worshiping them, um, hanging on every word they say, even or what they do, and imitating um, them, emulating them when it's not God and it's right. not what He wants. So be careful. It says. The prophets, they paid little attention to what men and women say about God or do for God. They listen to God and rigorously test all human language and action against what they hear. Mm. Among these prophets, Amos towers as a defender of the downtrodden, poor, and accuser of the powerful rich who use God's name to legitimize their sin. Wow. To legitimize their sin. That's happening today, you guys. Right. Right. Yeah. None of us can be trusted in this business. If we pray and worship God and associate with others who likewise pray and worship God, we absolutely must keep company with these biblical prophets. We are required to submit all our words and acts to their passionate scrutiny to prevent the perversion of our religion into something self-serving. Wow. I hope you're listening. Come on. A spiritual life that doesn't give a large place to the prophet articulated justice will end up making us worse instead of better, separating us from God's ways. And instead of drawing us unto, unto him, unto, it, it draws us unto them, right? Wow. So um, yeah, that's what's happening there. Um, what else do you got, honey? Um, okay, so I was going to read a little bit on my um, my birthday card from the Seggers. I just wanted to shout out a couple of the names. Gallo, Carter, Welch, Tankster, Twin, of course. Uh, Nacho, and I have to read this from a uh, soldier. It says, Happy birthday, old school. Kind of have a problem with that. Oh, come on. <laughs> May the Lord bless you with many more, soldier, aka cowboy hater. And then he writes, I'm certified, smiley face. Oh, come on. oh that's uh, what kind of birthday wish is that? So I, I appreciate you guys. We love y'all. Uh, this is uh, from Warren in North Carolina. It says, Hey, Real Vita Podcast. I'm writing, let you all guys, you guys all know how it's a blessing to be able to watch your podcast. It's definitely has changed me and the way I live and think. When I first went to SEG, I was just listening to the music, Seven, Brian T, all of the artists. Then I started listening and watching these documentaries. Then I was blown away. The reason is because I'm a former crip. That's all I knew was game banging, violence, pimping women, the whole nine. So as I'm watching these videos and interviews, it gave me hope. Then I started listening to the sermons that you and your husband and the other Vita family was preaching. It gave me a new direction. So I picked up my Bible and I started going to service and telling my moms on my new direction. To be honest, it feels so good. Wow. All right. So I'm going to read. I don't know how many letters I got three in front of me (laughs) and I want to read them all. I do. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) To real Vida, Fama, Mama Eve, Father Jeremy, Sister Sam, Brother Chris, Sister Ada, You've never heard of me before, although my name is fairly common. I'm Chris. I'm done. I wanted to thank you for the podcast. Listening to you guys has helped me through times when I have given up and there was no one to talk to. And with all the episodes, it felt like not only do you hear us, but somehow I feel you understand us on a personal level for some reason. Mm. If you only knew. I've got to tell you, I've lived a hard life through an abusive childhood wartime, trauma, mental issues, and addictions. I'm usually skipped over, but I know God has a plan for me to tell my story, but that's for another time. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me hope when I thought no one cared about me. Thank you for making me smile on the days I was falling apart on the inside. Mm. Y'all have been such a blessing in my life, and I want to thank you all for praying for us and loving on us. Please pray for me as I'm still going through some hard times, but like a child of God, he has my hand and I go willingly with him every day. Mm. I hope God blesses you all and thank you for teaching us how to live. Wow. Thank you, thank how you, thank cool. you. Very sweet. Awesome. All right, let me see if I can get through these other two. Hey, Real Vida. I wanted to write you guys for some time now. I just never got the 
might to do it. I'm watching your show right now with tears in my eyes. It's the episode where the guy was baptized in the shower mm. and then goes on about the guy who was grabbing his tablet and had suicidal thoughts. I too am down all the time and watch your videos and they bring me back up. I was born Muslim and have been Muslim all my life. I'm in the first year of serving a life sentence and I don't know what my time would be like without you guys. Every time I watch Real Vida, I cry. I think Mama Bear, you and your husband are some of the best people. You guys give me hope. Just knowing someone is out there advocating and worrying about us gives me hope. Whether my religion is being, is different or not, I still love you guys. I watch that episode with Dawn in Daytona Beach all the time. It makes me cry. Those are the streets I grew up in. Wow. I remember hearing about her when I was younger. My heart goes out to her and that lady with the bullhorn. That's a funny story. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that was cool. Well, Re Real Vida, much love from your friend. And that's, that's a good, awesome. good letter too. Yeah. All right. I'm going to read just a portion of this letter. Dear Real, Dear Real Vida family, Hello, Mama Eve and all the rest of you guys. I am writing because I've been putting this off for way too long. I can't fight the conviction in my heart any longer to tell you guys how much your podcast means to me. I started off by just listening to the music, but the power of the Holy Spirit is so strong emanating from you guys that I started watching the whole episode and the pureness, transparency, and real love that you guys exude hooked me. I've never felt such a bond with any religious program, church, preacher, or organization as I do with you all. I can't tell you how many times I've shed tears from the letters, testimonies, and messages you guys share with us. Your podcast has literally changed my whole perspective on God. Wow. Let me explain. You see, I was an Odinist when I first started watching your podcast, and I never even gave any thought to converting back to Christianity. But after seeing and hearing such personal conviction, faith, and true love from you guys, I realize that I've had it all wrong. I'm in the confinement unit, and just today, me and my bunkie were both watching your latest episode, By the Spirit, and neither one of us was aware that we were both watching at the same time. Then when you read that guy's poem about suicidal thoughts in his head when he was reaching for the tablet, after that, we both reached for the tissue at the same time to wipe the tears away. Wow. From both our eyes, that can only be the power of God. And I had to stop watching to write you this letter. There are so many lives impacted by y'all's podcast. I have had given up on God back in 2015. I have since experienced the mighty hand of God move in my life in ways that are impossible to explain. And I owe my salvation to the Real Vida family. Thank you guys for reaching a truly lost soul. Oh, wow. And I would, you know, here I've got, quite a few letters on the baptism and then like I knew right the guy that wrote the poem and there's the guy that's light and free and joking mm. and at the same time fighting these suicidal thoughts constantly trying to come on him right. and um, that's just where so many are I mean a, a massive amount of people and so that's why I did share it because I know that there are so many we're going to take a break um, probably right here in a minute. But before that break, I'm going to pray with you guys. Let's pray together. All of us, Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, God. We thank you, Lord, because you're in control, because you love us, Father. You know right in that moment what we need. So many times, God, when they're watching a Real Vida episode, it's, it's right the one in a topic or somebody they relate to, something that jumps out at them and speaks to them. There's a way that you're leading, Father. And Father, we thank you for being a part of that, Lord. We thank you by your spirit and your power, God. You have saved so many. And we ask, Lord, that you would just pour out your spirit. And Father, not only here, heal everyone that's listening right now, God, but that they themselves would begin to see those around them and begin to reach out and begin to share your love and pray and Father, not forget about others. And as we pour into the lives of others, Father, you fill us up. And so Father, we lay this all at your feet and we just command the spirit of suicide to go right now. That Father, you would bring a joy unspeakable and full of glory that doesn't make any sense. That you'd give peace that passes all understanding to your people who are reaching out for you today. And Father, we thank you for every miracle that is already on the way and happening. Father, that we don't even know about things that you are fixing. And Father, we trust in you and we give it back to you in Jesus' name, amen.
When the dog came back from outside, it was carrying an egg. The dog put the egg in the pot, then pointed to it, meaning, I want to eat this egg. The owner asked if it was the egg given by the neighbor. The dog shook its head, indicating it wasn't. The owner then asked where the egg came from. The dog crawled on the ground and started walking, signaling that it took the egg from their own chicken coop. At this moment, they heard someone opening the door outside. The owner asked if it was the neighbor from next door. Upon hearing this, the dog quickly went to check the situation, pushing a stool to the window, then stepping on the stool to look outside. At first, everything seemed fine. But then, the dog became nervous and hurriedly covered the egg with the pot lid before swiftly running to its bed, pretending to be asleep. The stray dogs observed that humans exchange paper money for food every day, so they picked the best leaves and tried to exchange them. Before this, the puppy stood carefully in the distance, biting the leaf tightly and watching, waiting until it was dark before daring to slowly move forward, using the selected leaf as an exchange. Another dog also wandered around each stall, looking longingly at the delicious food around. It silently walked away, hesitated for a long time, walked to the stall owner with a leaf in its mouth, hoping to exchange the leaf for food. The stall owner was moved by the stray dog's action and gave it some food. Fortunately, the remaining dogs quickly exchanged for delicious food. The leaves are their dog coins. All done with lunch. What do you want to do? What? what? Stella. Stella. Want. I let Max adopt her, and it was like she had done it a million times over. It did not take long for me to see that this was her baby. When Bo was born, she was actually a month late. I could tell right away that the mom was not interested. That's when I knew I was gonna have to pull her. When Max started hearing Bo crying, she was just trying to lick and say, I love you, I'll love you, I'll be your mom. They're really hard, two peas in a pod. I let her out of the pasture and she'll go around the whole property with Max. They're very, very similar. There did come a time for Bo to go back out with the other sheep, but every day we're out there and Bo just runs right up. It's very clear when they have connection. Just pure, awesome love. All right, people. So I do have a piece of one more letter that I wanted to save from right before we share the scripture and the word of God with you guys, um, because it has it has to do with it, right? So, um, dear Mama Eve, just a portion of the letter today. I just had the overcoming feeling to reach out to you ever since I started to watch Real Vida podcast. I started to read my Bible and even pray more. 
I've always believed in God, but now because of you guys, I'm starting to want to live by God's rules. Mm-hmm. I've been in and out of jail my whole life ever since I was 12 years old. And when I'm done with this four years, I will have given the state of Connecticut 19 years of my adult life. Wow. So you can see the math, one half of my life behind bars, not even counting the time I did as a kid. Anyway, I'm writing today because I'm very sad and I'm sad for many reasons, but mostly today I'm sad because a man who I didn't even know killed himself today in my pod. But the reason I'm so sad is this man could have been saved and I wish I could have been able to help him and tell him that it will get better because I've been there so many times where I'm just so down and out and feel like I'm all alone in this world and have nothing to live for. But now when I'm down and out, I pick up my Bible and talk to God. And that's mostly because of my Real Vida family. So thank you so much for all you do for us. Please get out to the brothers and sisters out there going through hard times where they can't see no good end. We got to let them know that God is always here for us, even when we feel that no one else is. Thank Mm -hmm. you and God bless you, yours truly. Wow. Okay, and so there are so many of these people. I mean, even I guess the the couple letters I read before the break really had to do with it. They they related, They, they wept, they felt the guy's poem where he's saying, I'm suicidal and I grab my tablet and I've got these suicidal thoughts right. that I'm fighting because so many, of course, are, are are going through that. There's these two sides and then you can be laughing, joking, you know, um, and what have you, but you got this heaviness inside right underneath the surface. Mm. And I want to remind you because people have lost their first love. And so the first that we're gonna talk about We're going to go to the book of Ephesians, right? I mean, book of Revelation. And we're going to talk about the church of Ephesus. And and the church of Ephesus, right? They're real letters to real churches in real places. Um, Ephesus is now Turkey, right? That's what it it, it has become, no longer called Ephesus. Um, But these are the first group of people that the scripture is talking to to this church, it's hard for me to to contain it to this one church um, because there's so much to this, but it says, Mm. write this letter to the angel of the church in Ephesus. And um, if you're wondering what that is, and I know a lot of people have a lot of questions. We've got a lot of questions lately. Um, The the word angel there is actually referring to the pastor. It's actually um, referring um, to those who are one who declares the word of the Lord is what it means there, right? Messenger. One who declares yeah. a messenger, yeah. one who Come declares on. the word of the Lord. And that would be the pastor of the church. And so, and it's it's something, right? Because um, people, there's a lot of times, there's been many writers that say, you guys are angels or you're, mm. you've been angels to me or you're my angels, or um, that's the word that they use. And it actually means those who are declaring the word of God, which yeah. we do. Um, I got a picture from Cofield that they, painted or drew from for for me um and there's an angel and she's exhausted and she's laying her head down and she's got a a little break in her halo and I thought oh wow um they don't even know right that um how much that spoke to me because you know even though people say we're their angels we're just we're just human and we're broken and we get tired right and we fall and we mess up and we you know have errors and faults in our life and so um but this is the angel that they're talking to It says, this is the message from the one who holds seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among seven gold lampstands. And it says, I know the things that you do. I have seen your hard work and your patient endurance. So, I mean, these are people that are hardworking. This church are hardworking people. I mean, we yeah. had hardworking people in our right. church because that's how we taught them. From from the moment they came into the Lord, um, you know, we'd have a work day at the church and everybody would be painting and cleaning and um, vacuuming and, you know, doing whatever things needed to be done in the church. I'd, I worked on the roof. Um, we had to replace the roof. Um, and so I worked on, on the roof, you know, shoveling tar off because it was a flat roof and replacing things. Um, but we worked a whole lot and work is yeah. good and working right. together is good. Right. But 
um, we we were a hardworking church. Ephesus is a hardworking church. And, and it says, I've seen that, right? God, mm-hmm. God is saying, I've seen your hard work and, and your patient endurance. Um, so it's people that are Christians that are really working and they're hardworking. Right. I'm talking about, you know, some field ministers and tear walkers and, um, you know, peer maybe educators and, um, and maybe inmate pastors, or maybe you don't have a title at all, but you have been a hardworking real Christian. Okay. And so I've seen this and I've seen your patient endurance, he says, which means you sacrifice and you've been through some things for the cause of what you do and for the cause of the kingdom of God and for the cause of the people that you're ministering to. You've, you've had to make some sacrifices and sleep or, or maybe even commissary, um, you know, what you wanted to do or, right. or, you know, in the heat running around, getting people bottles of water, or what, whatever it is, you've made some sacrifices and you have endured, um, in this hard work and you've been through some things and it's not like there's nothing going on in your case and you, you try to make parole and your family members on the outside having trouble. And so you're going through things yourself and yet you're serving other people that anybody in real ministry, that's what you're doing. You have, you have to have mm. patient endurance and sacrifice. Um, and so it says, you know, you are those people and I, I know you don't tolerate evil people right? You have examined those that have claimed that they are apostles, but they're not. And at that time, there wasn't, you know, the communication we have now by everybody's got a phone in their hand. There wasn't even a phone at the house at at that time. There wasn't, um, you know, social media, there wasn't cameras all over the place or Mm. what, you know. So there were people that actually came um, to their towns and go, the apostles sent me, right? You know, they're one of the apostles, they were sent, um, they were lying. And so they examined these people who were, you know, whatever, trying to get some fame, Mm. some fast buck or whatever it was, you know, um, trying to rob them in some way and cheat them and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And you've examined these people who say that they're apostles, but they are not. But Mm -hmm. we also have a day that people that say that their ministry or leadership or know so much or whatever, and that they are apostles, they are of God, they are God sent, but they're not, right? right? And so we also should be examining those people I said, you discovered that they are liars, right? They, they maybe they say one thing and they live another. So, um, you have patiently suffered for me without quitting, right? Wow. You, and it, it takes, it's big. Yeah. it takes a lot to, yeah. to not quit when you go through all the attacks by the enemy and the normal things that happen and you're going through things on your own and you got to make sacrifices. Like, mm. um, ministry is not all the glamour that some people think it is or that it maybe looks like or right. something, you know, they don't know how, much, how many hours you work. And when it comes right down to it, they don't want to do it and they wouldn't do it, right? right. They think they would, but it's not just jumping on, right? A podcast or jumping in a pulpit. Um, there's so many other things. Your whole life is revolving around whatever this yes. ministry is from morning until night. He says, okay. So he said all these great things about these people. He said, but... I have this complaint against you. Mm. You don't love me or each other. Wow. Like you did at first. And it, and I, I, I can mm. feel like weeks God has been talking to me about this. Like, um, you know, some of you started with a fire. Some of you got saved not that long ago. Um, you know, when you get saved, you're just like all gung ho and you're on fire and you think no mountain can bring me down. No Goliath, right. send Goliath my way. I'll fight right. him right now. Give me 10 of them, right? Um, you're a brand new baby Christian. You're full of the mm. fire of the Lord or whatever. So there's different stages yeah. Of this, right? So, um, so what, do, what, like, we should talk about maybe what that looks like. Um, let's first kind of examine people, right? So, right. Remember, you, you know, when you had your first love, like the honeymoon period, you just met and you're like, oh, he's so fine, right? <laughs> and, um, whatever. And so you go out on your date and you're on your best behavior and you're dressed the best. And, um, yeah. you know, you're not running around like with your crazy hair, like I do all day. Brush your um, teeth and floss. Yeah. <laughs> right. You yeah. know, you, you, you are so different, right? Cause you want your best foot forward, as they yeah. say, or whatever, you know, your best hair forward, <laughs> your best clothes forward, your best right. weight forward, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're trying to be your best and, um, whatever. And, you know, you're just like maybe 
maybe your husband, you know, likes country music and you've always hated country music, but all of the sudden you're like, oh, you know, I, I kind of like that. It's so cute <laughs> how he likes country music, right? Um, and so, I mean, you know, you just go crazy. All of a sudden you're interested in sports. You were never interested in sports. You don't know nothing about right. sports, right? Um, but all yeah. of a sudden you're willing to go to the football game or right. your baseball game. You know, you, you're yeah. doing all these things because you're in your first love. Right. And it's not like even you're just faking everything. Um, it's so new and fresh and you love this guy or girl so much that you're doing all these things. You know, you're opening doors. You never open a door in your life, right, <laughs> guy? And all of a sudden you're opening doors, <laughs> acting like the gentleman. Um, you yeah. know, all kinds of things happen. But listen, Linda, um, yeah. does that last when right. you're a year in marriage? Yeah. Right. Right. Now a year in marriage, you're like, you know, she's like, why don't you wait for me? Right. <laughs> and why don't you open the door? You used to open the door for me. And, you know, and he's like, well, you can get it yourself. You see, I got this in my hands and it's hot out here. And right. whatever those things are, right. Yeah. You, you lose your first love. Absolutely. And so, you know, uh, it, it, People do that with everything, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Say, for example, I've, I've got this picture here that we're putting up of a girl getting her first car, you know? And you remember when you got your first vehicle or if you got a new car or yeah. a new to you car that was right. used or whatever that you paid for. And at first you're washing it every week and mm -hmm. you're vacuuming it and detailing it. You know, there's never a piece of trash. Nobody's allowed to drink in your car. Right. And then a year or so later, it's just all trashed out. You open the door. It and, don't take a year. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but you true. know what you do, yeah. like always when we get our new cars and I, I'm like, you know, we need to park way away because, you know, you get right. those dings on the door at Walmart or yeah. wherever you're going because you, they're too close together. And so you park way far away and you're willing, yeah. you're willing to take the hike in the heat or in the snow um, because you don't want your car to be dinged up. Um, but your car's looking great. And what happens? Like, Right. It's it's looking great until the moment you decide to part between the the cars that are smushed together and you do it at some point. Right. You know. Cuz you're in a rush and you don't care as much anymore, you know. And so, you know, I I had put this picture up a few minutes ago when you're talking about first love of weddings. And this is something that I think about a lot being a family lawyer. I think about all the time. These people, maybe in a case that I'm dealing with that hate each other and they're fighting and they're destroying their kids. And I often think and frequently say to people, you, you know, you remember you made children together. There was a time where you loved each other and you made this commitment. What happened? You know, how did you get away from your first love? Right. Is this a process, right? And um, one thing I was just going to point out, hun, it's really interesting in that passage in Revelations chapter too, in the, in the original Greek version that it says you've left your first love, that word there, left means to disregard. I mean, if you go deeper yeah. into the meaning of the word left, you're, it's disregard, to omit, to neglect, uh, to desert wrongfully. Like there's things that you should do, but that you at some point stop doing. Uh, those things, you know, whether your relationship or with your car or whatever it is. And by the way, my honey treats me the same as he did on the honeymoon. And so he's going to try to open my door and I'm like, why, why, why don't you go get in the car? It's raining or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, you have to work on those things. And so, um, yes, we have to work on our first love. Um, and he says, you've lost it. So you don't treat me. Now let's bring this back to God, right? right? You don't treat me like you used to. So what were the things that you did in the Lord, right? You were worshiping. That's good. You were um, reading the word. You were in prayer. You know, you were making sure that you had balanced time on the tablet. And, 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 and if you played games and did other things that you still had God there. And, right. and, and little by little, when you lose your first love, you get away from those things. So yes. it's going to look different from the new baby Christian mm. to the mature believer or somebody who's been serving God for a long time. So you've got to examine your life to see what you have done right. um, differently. Yeah, like you're, you're talking about, it goes back to that meaning of leaving your first love in the Greek. You, you're you omitting things. The things that you used to do, you've stopped doing them. The things that you used to put a high importance on, maybe you're now disregarding and you're neglecting those things. And when you do, just like in any relationship or, you know, another example we had thought about is people when they get a new job, you know? I mean, you remember when you get the new job and you need a job, right? And you're going to be there. You're going to be 15 minutes early. You're going to be dressed appropriately. You're ready to go, right? You got a great attitude and you're being nice. And then, you know, you're so thankful maybe to God for the job. And then a few months later, you're grumbling and complaining about having to go. Um, and 
people do that in their relationship with God. The things that used to give them excitement and joy about being able to go worship, being able to fellowship, being able to read. They uh, no longer appreciate it. Yeah. They no, no, no longer appreciate it. So it right. says you don't love me or each other like you did at first. Are, are you still looking for the person around you that is hurting? Are you still, you know, sharing a shot of coffee and letting God move in that or a burrito or, you know, a spread or whatever that is? Are, are you still praying for, for those or having a prayer your call. What, what was it that you were doing that maybe you aren't doing anymore? And it says, look how far you've fallen. Mm, Turn wow. back to me and do the works that you did at first. Um, if you don't repent, mm. I will come and remove your lampstand from among the place, among the churches, from its place among the churches. So, so um, you know, when we had our, our church in Henderson, well, I took so many people off the streets, like, um, so many, and there, and there was a, a constant like uh, thing. They needed clothes. They needed to get their license, their social security. They needed, um, you know, shoes or whatever it was, food. And um, so there was this one young guy. He was one. Of, it was my first um, addict that I had taken in, and so he was stuck to me like, you know, a little mijo and um, he would go with me everywhere. And he loved like when we would go get a new person and we'd get them clothes and stuff like that. Like he loved being a part of that. And, mm. and so later on, you know, he was in the church over 10 years and um, you know, he, he got married, you know, things happen and he lost his first love. True. He, yes. he lost his first love. And yes. so, um, you know, then I talked to him, whatever. And he was, you know, I get a call at that moment when I'm talking to him about him losing his first love. And um, there's somebody that I need to go pick up and um, all that's going to happen. I'm going to get clothes. At, and he's like, oh, I'll, can I go with you? Mm. Like, I love doing that, right? <laughs> and so he went, he went, he came with me and he hadn't done it in so long. Mm, and right. it gave him such joy. Wow. But the thing was that he should have continued doing that. Yes. Not just with me, but on his own right. throughout that time. Come it on. was the selfishness that that yeah. got him. He was no longer doing those things, no longer caring about those around him. He was only taking care of himself and about right. his business and what he wanted and and all that. And that don't satisfy. Yeah, that right. actually does not satisfy. And so um, he mm. was so happy. Get back to the things you were doing at first. And it says, if you don't repent, mm. I will come and remove your lampstand. And you're like, man, but he just said how great this church was. Like that seems kind of mean, right? He says you've endured and you haven't mm. quit and um, you've not tolerated evil people. And you, you know, you've done all these things. And, but he says, if you don't repent, if you don't right. change, if you don't turn around, if you don't return to what you were doing, I'm going to come and remove your lampstand from among its place among the churches. Wow. And, but you don't realize that little, little um left turn that you've taken is going to go so far right and and mind you remember that this is turkey and these were christians and when they lost their first love they no longer reached out to those around them and guess what there is less than one percent of a christian left in turkey right now yeah wow. all because the They're church left. of ephesus wow. yes. decided yeah i'm gonna take care of me and i'm tired you mm. know and I'm not going to go tear walking today. It'll start just like that. Wow. I'm not going to go today. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. You know, those guys are doing the same thing. They don't really listen. I don't know how many times that it's been that I've been back there. Um, you know what? I, I don't think I'm going to go to that seg service today. Why don't you guys go on without me? You rappers, you worshipers, right? I, I don't think that I'm going to talk to my celly, um, mm -hmm. anymore or, um, I'm going to go to the chapel anymore. And, and little by little, you start that. And before you know it, the gospel has stopped spreading. Mm. We're supposed to be a disciple and make disciples. And you can't do that when you've lost your first love. Repent, he says, or I'll remove your lampstand. I mean, you won't have your position wow. that you had. Uh, yeah. I'll call someone else. Listen, mm. God is reaching for his people and he's going to use a willing vessel. And if you're going to sit back yeah, and not do what you're called to do. Yeah. You know, I want to share something before you go on real quick. I know there's a lot to get to, but one more thing about what it says in verse four that goes along with what you're saying and that example of the young men in our church. I think sometimes when people get away from their first love, they think, well, something's wrong with my love. You know, that it's not like it used to be, right? But the way that it says it in verse four, it says, thou has left. You yeah. left, you voluntarily left. So like the young man you're talking about, that joy of serving others 
in God was always there. He just got away from it. So it's not like God doesn't do it for me the way that he used to. It's just, I don't go to God anymore the way that I used to. And and, and so that word there, it says to desert wrongfully, to abandon uh, my first love. And so that's what people I think miss so often is they, they get away from that joy uh, that just comes in relationship with God. So, you know, Sometimes relationships, um, let's say, grow cold. Let's let, or, or let's talk about, like, say, marriage or whatever, right. um, grow cold because what you appreciated before now is taken for granted. Mm, that's right? good. Yeah. So, so when you know you like this this guy that was he was dating a girl that was kind of really uptity and whatever and. Um, apparently didn't do that that many things like domestic kind of things, right? So now he was dating a new girl and she wasn't as fancy or whatever. And um, and so we were talking to him, it was years ago, like 20 or more years ago. And he, and he was just a friend and, and we were talking to him and he said about this new girl that I was kind of surprised because she wasn't as fancy as the normal girlfriend um, that he had. She was pretty, you know, kind of plain and, and what have you. But he said, you know, he said, you know, he said, when I'm thirsty, she makes me tea. <laughs> and, I, you know, kind of popped my head. I was like uh, a little surprised. But then I realized, oh, this is a really big deal to him wow. because it had never been done. Wow. That yeah. just to be made a pitcher of tea, iced tea, like he was like, she makes me tea. Like, and you believe this, right? <laughs> right. Um, and so that's the thing, right? So, so, so many times in that kind of relationship, um, let's say your husband does open your door or your, your boyfriend or whatever. And um, you were so appreciative. You're like, he opens my door. Like nobody's ever done that for me before, right? Um, and then you don't appreciate it maybe later on. Right. You're not appreciating. They're, they're expected, um, demanded. Right. And no longer cherished, valued right. the way they should be. Absolutely. Right? right. And so that in the relationship with God, also happens. Absolutely. So, you know, when you told me that you wanted to share about uh, losing our first love, because it is so dangerous when right. people lose their first love, their spiritual walk, I mean, it could it could lead to the death of them. I wanted to kind of give some keys uh, for ways to not lose yeah. your first love with God. And so um, I thought of a, a few different ways. This is, there There could be many, but these are the kind of the top three for me that I want to just talk about. And I'm sure my wife will have some thoughts about them too. Uh, the first one is just gratitude, whether it's your wife, your job, your new car, the Lord, <laughs> the Lord, your walk, your, your walk with God, just remaining grateful for what you have. Um, and so I want to share this passage. This is one of the first passages I ever memorized. And so I've got it in my head in King James version. Uh, and in first Thessalonians chapter five, it says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing in all things or in everything, give thanks for this is literally the will of God in Christ Jesus. It is the will of God that you be thankful right. and grateful. Uh, and, and instead of focusing on what you don't have, focusing on what God has already done, just that he rescued us from sin and death, right? And rescued us from addiction and bondage. Uh, be, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. It says, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. It says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good, which I just thought is so uh, perfect for this message that we're talking about today. We should hold fast to the things which are good, which is the love of God, which right. is his grace and mercy, his forgiveness, the joy and the peace that you experienced when you first came to God. You've got to hold fast to those things, right? Um, I mean, if it's your marriage, people need to fight for their marriage. They, they should hold fast. And actually, you know, my wife said, we've, we've had criticism and complaints sometimes because they think that we love each other too much. <laughs> we actually had uh, someone that was close to us say at one point, well, y'all uh, act like you just got married. And this was like 10 or 15 years into our marriage. That's the way I feel about her every day, every, well, every day. Well, you know, <laughs> Um, I don't know if you, you remember, um, but we had a couple in our church that that didn't act um, in love, I guess. Yeah. And so, so the guy in the relationship, the husband, was really annoyed that we did. Mm. And so, um, 
he was like, well, you know, just wait till you've been married like 10 more years or whatever, like, or five more years um, that, you know, like, you'll be like us. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be miserable um, yeah. like me. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, and I, I don't know, I guess that, you know, they didn't keep doing the things or appreciating mm. each other right. in the ways that they had or should or whatever. And so people have this thought that it's an automatic, an automatic thing that you're going to lose your love. Right. That it's going to diminish. Right. And it does that it do, it doesn't have to do that. Neither does your walk with God. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And so we got to hold fast to that which is good and be grateful in all circumstances and give thanks uh, and rejoice evermore, it says. So I love that passage. It's a great passage to live by and it applies so much to not losing our first love. Another verse uh, about gratitude that I think is great in Colossians chapter two, verse six, it says, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus, walk in him, like walk it out, maintain it. It says rooted and build up in him and established in faith, just as you were taught abounding in thanksgiving. Amen. And so it's just this idea of, um, you know, I mean, being established in your walk with God, not just being, uh, you know, the way the wind blows and, you know, here today, gone tomorrow kind of thing. Any commitment, including your commitment to God, it's going to take being established and growing. And that's one of the reasons why we want to teach these principles of the word of God. We want you to not get lost from your first love and, and, so and get you, separated. Yeah, so you exercise your faith. Right. In praying for people, in praying for the things that you you need and in communication right. with God. Because prayer is not just asking for things, right? So prayer in the relationship with God, communication. If if yes. all the relationship was even in marriage, that all I ever did is ask my husband for money or something. Every time I saw him, right, got my <laughs> hand out. Um, that gets old, right? That's not romantic. Um right. and so it's communication and, and and serving one another and um helping one another and you know. That kind of thing, right? I, um, my sister came, one of my sisters came not that long ago. And when she went home, she texted me and she said, I was in awe mm. at how much you honor each other in your marriage. Wow. Um, that she was just watching that, right? And, and I thought, oh, it was just our regular normal life. But I think some of those things like, well, my husband was on the computer at night on the couch because he was going to do some work. And then he closed his eyes and he fell asleep and I, I felt bad. So I didn't wake him up. I thought I'm not going to wake him up because then he's going to get right back to it. He needs to sleep. So I just turned off the light and left him in there. I propped the pillow under his neck. So um, he sleeps really hard and he found himself at three in the morning or four. He woke up that he had been working so hard. I just rested my eyes. Right? And so, <laughs> But you know, you got to exercise those things. Right. Yes. Exercise the love and the honor. And, and, and I would say, Say even just like this, if if you went to the gym and you were working out and you know you've been working out for a couple of years and you're all buff and everything, and then you stop working out and you get flabby <laughs> and you're like, I just don't know how I got flabby, right? Yeah. Um, I, I really want to be buff. I really want. What do you got to do? You got to return to working out, right? You got to right. return to eating right. You got to turn to redo because because just because you wish it. Right. Um, it's, you're not going to get the muscle back, right? Exactly. You have to work out. You have to exercise your muscles. You have to exercise your faith. And so you have to exercise that faith in prayer. Um, like, let me believe with you, right? I don't yeah. know what to believe for right now in my life. Let me, what do you got, right? What do you got? I'll believe with you. We'll pray about that. Come we'll on. fast together, yeah. right? Um, it, you know, let me exercise my faith in that this is my last um bag of coffee. And, and so I think I better hoard it. Right. And not, mm. but, but you exercise your faith and you go, I'm going to give somebody a shot of coffee, you know, yeah. and I don't know where I'm getting my next one, but I guess we're going to share it. And it's going to be the last we eat, you know, whatever. And you do that. You got to exercise your faith. And I'm not saying give everything away, but I'm saying, come on, get some exercise, right? Yeah. The way you used to, the way you used to believe. And I tell you what, it'll come right back, right? Yeah. All that joy and the spirit of God and the anointing of God and the miracles of God will get back on track with you. You'll line up with with his word and yes. will just like you did before. Well, and that's a, that verse and that thought is a perfect segue to our second key to not losing your first love with God, which is perspective. And um, a great passage in 2 Corinthians chapter four, it says, so we fix our eyes on what is, not on what is seen, but what is not seen. For what is seen is temporal, but what is unseen is eternal. And so it's really good. I think 
one of the reasons why people get away from their first love with God sometimes is they're like Peter out walking on the Sea of Galilee towards Jesus. And he got his eyes off of Jesus and his, fixed his eyes instead on the waves. And the second he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink. And I think a lot of people, they're not seeing maybe the thing that they prayed for. You know, you're talking about uh, prayer being sometimes not just a wish list for Christmas or whatever, but they're not seeing important things that they care about, you know, um, happening right away in the time they want and the way they right. want. And their eyes are on the waves and the circumstances and whatever's going on. And when that happens, because you're, you're fixing your eyes on things that 2 Corinthians 4 says are not real. They're temporal things, right? They're not eternal things. And when you do that and take your eyes off God, you're going to lose perspective, you know? But uh, I would say also, it's like marriage, right? For better or for worse. Amen. In right. sickness and in health, right? Um, for richer, for poor. And right. so God is also looking for somebody who loves him for who he is, not for what he can give them Absolutely. or what he's doing for him right now. Right. And so is it real love, you know? Um, is it real love when you when you came to the Lord, you know, some sometimes there's such big sacrifices and big faith in baby Christians that when you get older, you're not you're not doing you, you you're not willing to do those things that you even did as a baby, um, because you got spoiled. And and God is looking for someone who will love Him for who He Amen. is, not what He is doing. Amen. And you're going to get tested on that, right? Absolutely. Um, and so another good verse on perspective uh, to help you maintain your first love is Colossians chapter three, where it says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. You know, when you are just completely obsessed with things of this earth, of course you're going to get shaken because, you know, Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. It's, it's, everything's not going to be, uh, you know, a bed of roses like, like Eve says sometimes. So that is an important also to have the right perspective. Um, and the third key really that is so important, uh, to not losing your first love is just honesty, being honest about, um, everything. It says in Ephesians chapter four, it says, you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor for we're all members of the same body. And, you know, we, we, we don't just, have to tell our neighbors the truth. We have to tell ourselves the truth sometimes to be able to get our mind right. There's times where your mind starts drifting away from your first love with God. And sometimes we have to remind ourselves of, of the truth of what he's done and, and what he's brought us out of and, and how he's changed our life. And instead of getting focused on things, we, we do have to speak truth to ourselves. Uh, and, and sometimes you need people in your life that are gonna speak truth to you as well. Uh, the body of Christ that sees things with God eyes to help you kind of refix your gaze. Um, just like the same way, like with marriage, you, sometimes you need to go to a counselor, you need a pastor uh, to help you remember the reason why you got married and, and all those kinds of things. And we have to do that in our walk with God too. Okay. I, I do want to share one more scripture about honesty. Um, in Proverbs chapter 11, verse three, it says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Um, and, and so, in fact, in one version, it says unfaithfulness destroys you with duplicity. And so it's so important that you be honest with yourself and you speak the truth of the word of God. Um, it, it's one thing that I do um, every day. I don't even know if my wife knows that I do this, but every day when I'm leaving the house, because I go to sleep early, uh, it takes her a long time to go to sleep. She usually goes to sleep later in the in the, the morning. Yeah, yeah. Early in the morning, <laughs> right around Three, the time, you know, shortly four. before I actually get up and leave. And so one thing that I've always done um, during the time that we've been married, which is going on 27 years now, um, when I leave the room and I did it this morning, I just hold out my hand and I pray over her and I speak the truth and I, I tell her every single day that I love her and I pray over her and um, I, it, reminding myself that every day, that is the best way to start my day. Um, She's the greatest blessing in my life. Um, and I'm thankful that 27 years later, I still have my first love for her. And every day I start with um, reading my Bible and time in prayer because that keeps me centered on my first love for God. But if I didn't have that, there's no way that we could do all the things that we do. Uh, we're so busy all day long, but that's what gets me focused every single day is it's just speaking the truth to myself in my walk with God. Okay, so I'll, I want to share with 
because, you know, there's different stages in your life. As we talked about um, how getting away from your first love looks to mm-hmm. different people in the different maturity right. of, of their life and their walk with God. Um, I want to read a piece of this scripture in Lamentations, and I'm going to read it, I guess, in the um, message version. So Lamentations 3 and verse 19, I'll never forget the trouble, the utter Mm. lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. I remember it all. Oh, how well I Mm. remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. But there's one thing I remember and remembering I keep a grip on hope. God's loyal love couldn't have run out. Mm. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They're created new every morning. How great your faithfulness. I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over. I remind myself, I speak truth to myself like, Jeremy was saying, I speak truth to myself. I go to the side. I remember where I came from and the hell that I was living in, right? The darkness that I had in my life, the brokenness, the pain of what I caused myself and others caused mm. me and, and how, how bad it was, wow. how horrible it was mm. before I came to God, how broken I was. So that, that when you're tempted to lose your first love, right. you have a talk with yourself about these things. I remember and I say it over and over. He's all I got left. Come on. He's what I have. He's wow. what I found. He's the one that rescued me. He mm. came when nobody else was there. And I remind myself of these things. Yeah. God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. It's a good thing to quietly hope, quietly hope for mm. help from God. It is a good thing when you're young to stick out through the hard times. When life is heavy, and hard to take, go off by yourself, enter Mm. the silence, bow in prayer. Don't ask questions, wait for hope to appear. Don't run from trouble, take it full face. The worst is never the worst. And that's something that I remind myself, the worst is never the worst. So when I'm hurting, you know, sometimes that's why people lose their first love is that things are going bad and you're tired and you're exhausted and and, and you're going, why is this happening to me? And, And then, the worst is never the worst. Right. Like, that's what I think about, you know, in my hurts, in my situation, in my struggle. And then I think, you know, I have a whole lot of people that I know that are going through worse situations right. that that I'm hurting more than me. Like I, I get my focus off of myself and my situation mm. and I begin to go back at it, doing all I can for others, saying, God, I know that as I'm going and doing for others, you're going to pour into my life. You're going to take care of my situations and, and and maybe it won't work out the way I want it to, but I'm going to trust you. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to run after you. Mm. And I'm going to remember that the worst is never the worst. It, it, it could be worse um, wow. than what I have it and what's going on in my life. Life, and I have a good talk with myself. Come on. And I think that that's what people need to do. Have a good talk with yourself. Yeah. Examine yourself. Correct yourself. Get back in line with the will and the word of God. Cry out to him and remember he is our hope. Amen. So we're gonna pray you guys Amen. on the way out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in agreement. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us of our first love, to, for showing us what to do, Lord, yes. for reminding us that the worst is never the worst, Lord God, and that, that there are people all around us who are hurting, who are are broken. We need to get back, Father, to discipleship. We need to get back to being a friend, Lord, to being the fellow Christian, Lord, a fellow brother and sister that we're supposed to be to those around us, Lord, to get our focus off of ourselves, Lord, to trust you with that, Lord, to, to, be passionate again about what you have done in our lives. The testimonies begin to tell somebody about what you did for us, Father. And we may be facing another mountain, but just like you took care of the first one and the second one and the third one, and you worked over and over in our lives, you'll do it again. And so, Father God, we hand it to you and we give you all the praise and all the glory. We just break every hindering spirit and every lie of the enemy that he's come against your people, Father. They have hope because they have you. And Father, we trust you in Jesus' name, amen.